Hi everybody and thanks for listening to Incoherent Ramblings. We just wanted to let you know that there's a new page for our random ramblings on our website where you, yes you, could make submissions on what we might cover as a random ramble. We might not even know about it until the actual day of the ramble. So feel free to join us. Well, to uh... Join us or die. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, everyone else is here, too. Hey, we're all staring at Joey. <laughs> nice uh, also, uh, we know that we have some subscribers out there, so please feel free to uh, not only email us, but also to comment on any one of our wonderful pages, good or bad. We don't care. <laughs> Just comment so and we know you're out there. Take two. What? Dude! I don't even remember what I said the first time! That was good! That was okay. good. It might be good. It might be good. It's random. Alright. Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything. Where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings! And welcome to the new episode of Incoherent Ramblings. This is Ramble. <laughs> no, it's coming too. <laughs> this this one, I was watching him this side, so he didn't get me. No, I, like, I like this to be surprised. I'm like Ramble <laughs> zero two seven. We're doing free will today, but before we get started, I oh uh, I will. <laughs> we should introduce ourselves. First. Okay, I I'm Joey Shamel. Uh, we've also got. Paul Hottinger. And Kale Anderson. And Daryl George. And we have today a uh, celebrity endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the blue. For our show. Hello. This is Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and I would like to welcome you to listening to Incoherent Ramblings. You can reach us at show at iamrambling.com. <laughs> you can hear my voice featured in such classic films as... March of the Penguins, Happy Feet, Happy Feet Two. <laughs> Are we gonna and go down the whole list here, <laughs> dude? You gotta piss him off. Silence. <laughs> I've been the voice of God and the face of God in a couple of movies featuring Jim Carrey, which I would prefer not to name. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Freak. No. Oh. <laughs> Bye. Silence! <laughs> I kill you! Thank you, Mr. Freeman, and we'll see you later. <laughs> Guys, that sucks that he must have had a stroke or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he sounded pretty funky. Yeah, I don't know what was up with that. He <laughs> sounded white. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he had the Michael Jackson procedure. All right, so... I uh, away one of his... <laughs> his little uh, freckles, you know? Okay. <laughs> and... And, sh- and scene. Let's continue. So, yeah, you can reach us at show at rambling. Uh, I am rambling.com. He grabbed my ass while he was here. Anyway, you can reach us. <laughs> I'm trying to give a, Vader? I'm trying to give you a point where you can cut that out if you need to. So. Okay, which I probably need to. Stop talking about it. Oh, okay. Wait, no, if it's good, we'll keep it. We'll just cut this part out. Oh, okay. I think I missed the mark on that okay. one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you just got out of the freezer. It's like, <laughs> God damn, it's cold in there. <laughs> Hello, this is Gart Mini. How are you today? <laughs> and cut. That's good. All right, back to the show. So what was that email again? I didn't hear it. Yeah, where, where in the hell are we anyway? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to an all-new episode of Incoherent Ramblings. I'm your host, Joey Shamble, and today we're going to be talking about uh, should, free will. Should we introduce ourselves? Free Willy. Free Will. No, not Free Willy. Free Will. We're episode zero two seven. Free Will, and we also got Paul Hottinger and Kale Anderson and Daryl George. And our uh, sponsor today is Zerg from Toy Story Two. I am because he has free will, or does he not? Because he's a robot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, it's because he says we have no free will. Oh, okay. because it's only his will. Yes. Oh, the will of Zerg! Up here, yeah, we're yeah! so white. Okay, so uh, uh, this is uh, Neil before Zerg. No, no, wrong movie. <laughs> okay, but that actually goes into our pre-ramble. So the pre-ramble today is: What do you guys think 
of the possible new Batman in the Superman Batman movie, Mr. Ben Affleck. Yes! <laughs> Affleck. No, I, I don't. What, 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 do you, uh, what do you guys think? I just watched Goodwill Hunting last night, and I just kept thinking to myself, that's Batman. Just, <laughs> but, you know, watch Daredevil and think that. Ooh. That's oh, God. But I know. Everybody. That's why everybody's saying it's not going to work. But as a Bruce Wayne, he might. I think he might fit the part. Yeah. Everybody said that about. Uh, oh no, Val Kilmer. No, not Val Kilmer. The first Christian Batman, Dale. Michael Keaton. Michael right. Keaton. Everybody yeah. said that about Michael Keaton. They said Michael Keaton Mr. is Batman, Mom? and he was awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, who knows? You know about awesome, I'm a little scared. Like right. Man of Steel, I thought was okay. I still haven't seen it. So I, I haven't seen anything. it right? And it's like I really want to to build on that and then throw in Batman. I'm like. Yeah. They're like jumping like to the next step. Mm-hmm. It's almost like Iron Man and Iron Man Two had to happen. Then the other right, right, jump right, into right, right. It, there needs to be something in between. Man, Man of Steel, I always, I feel like he needs one more story to really. They're trying to into, they're, into Superman. They're trying to capitalize on the whole crossover thing that Avengers have been doing, which, by the way, coming out soon is the. Uh, Agents of Shield with by Joss Whedon. I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing oh, that. So man. looking for. Have you guys seen the preview of it? Yeah, where he's in the corner. <laughs> then really, oh, uh, it's pretty freaking hilarious. He's what's his name? Agent Folsom is standing in the corner, and they're like, Agent Folsom, isn't he dead? And he walks out of the dark corner, and he says, and he says, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. There's a light out there or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark wow. in the corner. I had to do. It. Oh, I can't wait. All right, so that was, unless you guys want to add anything else, that was the pre-ramble. Pre-ramble to you. All right, guys. Today is, we're talking about my choice from uh, last time, which is free will. You, uh, I heard that you had a poem oh. that uh, you wanted to discuss with us, Paul, that you have been working on since our last episode, a poem about free will. Uh, yeah. It's not the one that I, I, starts um, with the roadmap of Jupiter. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> well, why don't I start your poem? Well, here, well, I just—it's just, it's just a, a portion of it because it, it, I wrote a really long poem, but the the heart of it uh, truly reads that you can choose a ready guide in some celestial voice. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. You can choose from phantom mm-hmm. fears and kindness that can kill. I will choose a path that's clear. I will choose free will. Hallelujah, praise the Lord! Yes! That, that sounds rocking. I like it. Does. Yeah, it what do you think about that? Rush. What do you what do you think about the fact that he says he made that up, Daryl? I think that's poppycock. That's <laughs> my right. free will, and I say I don't think he did that. Uh-huh. No. I got off the internet. Ah. Willingly and freely. <laughs> I think, though, based on the content of this show and Paul's excellent sense of humor, he was destined to do that. Ah, yes. so let's. So there talk was no free will. He had to do it. No. Exactly. So let's talk. It ab- had to be put in. There. Let's talk about that. We're looking at the difference between the possibility: does free will exist, or is everything determinism, or is there some sort of mix? Are, are we just? Like a feather on the wind, like Mama says. Or dust in the wind. Or dust. <laughs> dust in, in the wind. wind. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> like, we're just dust in the wind. Dust, wind. wind. Oh, it's oh. Ah. Like Sansa. Sorry, Bill and Ted. Huh? Yeah, I apologize to Bill and Ted for yeah, that. We're yeah, do- we're doing a scene for Bill and Ted. So, uh, free will, does it exist? What do you think? We'll start with Paul. Uh, okay, let's go to camp. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that uh, no, I don't think one pure free will exists. Do you think it's totally determinism where everything is? Well, already- I guess. Well, what I'm trying to think of okay, and what what aspect are you going at? Because I'm thinking of like how uh, as like Americans we have instilled in us that we have free will. We can do what we want, do whatever, whatever. But we're still governed by laws and by mm-hmm. social. Um, what society dictates dictates that is okay. So, <laughs> not, Dick, not, dictates, not, not dictates. <laughs> Penis takes. you know what I mean. Yeah. Dictates. No, I, we're, <laughs> <That's a spot laughs> <in between. laughs> wasn't that was, was it from? Wait, yeah, wasn't that? Uh, uh, oh, bewitched joke. <laughs> Dick and Darren. Darren. Darren Tate. Dick Sargent, Sergeant York. Sergeant York. <laughs> so, no, the idea behind free will is: Are we making choices because we're really choosing them? It kind of as it's kind of random, or because we have a choice that we can actually go one way or the other, or 
are we already determined that whatever we choice we make was going to happen because cause and effect? Something or are we destined it? to yeah. say the same thing over and over again in circles? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> yes. I, I think, yeah. so Paul's saying on, a, on the broad spectrum that uh, we have free will in society. I guess you could call it society free will. Um, but not completely because, of course, we're governed. But I think it would be independent of society because free will exists whether or not there's a social structure. Well, that's the question. I guess that answers the question about how you feel about free will. Maybe, kind of, sort of. Let's go to Daryl. What do you feel about free will? Okay. Um, I think whether or not free will is determined is kind of inconsequential to us as human beings because whether or not we actually have a determined future or the will to change our future, we have the illusion of free will which gives us essentially the feeling that we're in control. And even if we proved otherwise that the entire universe is deterministic and we have no control over the future, would it cause us to change things like rules about punishment and things like that? Because it's like, well, now we know that someone couldn't help but fulfill their destiny and commit a crime. So does does that mean we're going to be lenient toward them? But that decision in itself whether to be lenient or not, is also predetermined. So my roundabout point here is, even if our course is plotted out completely ahead of us, the fact is we still have an illusion of free will, which means that we're going to live like beings who have free will. I have a feeling your idea was very similar to Kale's. Well, sort of. Go for it, Kale. What it is is that I think if we could actually see down to the sub 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 atomic level way down to the god particle or whatever everything would be deterministic but once you start moving away from that chaos happens and so it becomes it might as well be free will that's what i'm saying it might as not just that well you know in society we might be destiny that someone wouldn't silence their phone yeah, that's so, that's no, that's just history. Oh. <laughs> Not determined. Go ahead, Go Paul. ahead, Paul. So when when then we saying how because of all all the external things coming in, that free will is really just like adjusting to your environment. Like you're making decisions based on how everything around you is going. I think there's so enough randomness or, going on that there might as well be free will. So we do have free will. I'm but, I'm saying right, and the, but the idea is that. You're when you're making a decision, you're not making a decision. You have nothing to do with it, and we'll go into that a little bit more when we get to biology. Mm-hmm. But the, the base, the overall idea of free will is just kind of what what you guys are talking about. And from my point of view, um, I love the idea of free will. But when you look at cause and effect, it's one of those things where it's like, and if you could know everything, you could probably figure out what's going to happen. I, I kind of like the idea that things get so complicated it creates free will. That's well, kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. You're kind of pointing towards some aspect of chaotic systems like uh, determining the weather. Mm-hmm. Right. Part of the problem of determining a weather forecast long term is that we have very imperfect data about right. what's happening in the in the atmosphere. So the thing is, it's, it's but hot today. It's kind of. Um, <laughs> Well, basically, the thing is, if you know enough of the variables... It's determined. And the thing is that you, you will can't... will have swamp ass. <laughs> <laughs> you can't necessarily ever predict the weather you perfectly not to. far in the future because it's a chaotic system. Right. But in theory, if you had perfect data about the atmosphere, you would be able to predict it because a chaotic system is going to be predictable if your data is perfect. I kind of like the idea that maybe the way it works is kind of like the, the whole... Uh, What's the whole p- problem with uh, subatomic particles? You can't know where it is and know its speed at the same time. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's one of those things where... Without yeah, affecting un- it. Uncertainty right, principle. The uncertainty principle. Maybe it's something like that where if you don't have the data, it truly is free will. It's so complicated that it cannot be predicted, obviously. But if you do have the data, automatically it becomes determined. Yeah. Well, you get to a point where you... It might take every particle in our universe to, to understand the determined pathway, which means it doesn't matter anyway. 
But then if you understand, but then you come with to a feedback loop. If you understand the determined pathway, can you affect the determined pathway? No, of course not. Because once you, the thing is, is that if it's all determined, you can't affect it. So it's going to happen anyway. But I think that the complication of it enters chaos. And I think the, the farther away you get away from those deterministic values, chaos makes free will I think you just unintentionally endorsed determinism, though. Because you were saying that if you had a perfect model of the universe... No, that's what I'm saying. If you could... You wouldn't be able to interrupt it. Right, you couldn't. But that will never happen because it would take every particle in our universe, which means you couldn't even think about it because it's taking every part of you to make it But that basically... I think uh, uh, an extension of what you're saying, though, would be that you kind of believe that uh, since the Big Bang everything was unfolding in a predetermined path. And if you knew what that path was, you wouldn't be able to stand in its way. Right, and, and the thing is, is that, but to go there, you would have to use the rest of the universe to do it, so you couldn't even bring up the question, because even bringing up the question would take that away from the deterministic path. So we come back to what Daryl was saying, was basically everything is determined, but we don't know it. We can't feel it. It's, so the illusion of free will is the best way to go. But about there is everything. that quantum randomness that mm-hmm, that's is at true. The, the core of everything. So um, <clears throat> I think those decisions, like as far as, well, not, not necessarily calling them a decision, but um, the fact that the position and velocity of any given particle is a, at, at the same time, those two factors are unknowns. Um, the wave function only collapses when an event happens or an interaction with the particle. So I think that if you want to support the idea of a changing universe that doesn't just follow one predetermined path, that's the way to it. The fact that when the wave function collapses, you wind up ascertaining some new bit of data about that particle. And in mass, um, even though that's happening on a very small level, those interactions amongst those particles will basically amount to things happening in the macro world differently. I'm, I'm thinking that the beginning of the universe, that itself was so simple that it was determined. As it expands out and that uh, mass or whatever you want to call it expands out, it becomes more and more complicated and it get, becomes less being able to be determined. Even though if you follow the path, you might be able to, which I don't know. That's to me. That's the point of ridiculousness. You don't follow the path. You never get there. But you. Yeah. So once it got to a certain point, there was free will essentially. I think. I think what you're saying is something that uh, uh, the reason I chose free will as something for us to talk about is because it's a rush song. Yes. No. <laughs> oh. <coughs> but if you, I totally forgot. If it about makes that, you feel we better. Have, we yeah. really should have. Uh, you know, made an introduction for it. Maybe we will. So the reason I chose it was because I just recently read a book called, that you've heard me mention in the last few uh, podcasts, called Incognito. And in the book, uh, he uh, talks about free will and about how it works in the brain and things like that. And one of the things he brings up is that uh, something that, uh, because he's mainly talking about consciousness, and he's saying that the creation of consciousness cannot be understood just by the parts of the brain or the parts that make it up because there's this theory, and I forget what it's called, but it basically says when you put the parts of something together, just because you examine the smaller parts, you don't see what emerges when they're all put together, which in the case of the brain is consciousness. You, you can't necessarily look at the gray matter of the brain to try and figure out consciousness. And maybe it's kind of the same way with free will that maybe with uh, when you look at cause and effect, when cause and effect gets to a certain level, Perhaps what comes out of it, what uh, is created separate from all that, is free will. Um, an example he gave in the book was pretend you're like a native on an, on an island who's never seen technology at all, and you find a radio. And with that radio, you take apart the back, and you, you're, you're a logical person, and you, you know, you know, even though you're a native, you understand the idea behind it, like a scientific method about what works and what doesn't. If you try and figure out what makes the voices come from that radio, you notice that if you disconnect this wire, the voices stop. But if you put this wire back on, the voices go again. So you might think, ah, the voices come from this wire. When that's not true at all, the voices come from somewhere completely different. And so something comes to be through you know, connections or something even from an outside point of view. Maybe something outside the universe affects things to make it 
to make it chaotic or to make it free will. Like a, another universe? Right. Maybe well, maybe, well, maybe well, there's thing, Yeah, maybe there's another universe that has certain effects on our universe. So everything in our universe is determined. But there are certain places maybe in maybe in our minds where there's like a, some sort of connection to a different universe or maybe you know just in black or, holes. Well, I think hmm. more reasonably a connection to maybe other um, dimensions. Ah, yes. Of space. Yeah, yeah. Or and time. that and that so and then in that universe, maybe everything's determined, but where they cross over, they affect each other in ways that causes indeterminism. I'm no expert on it, but my understanding is that um, if there is a multiverse, then other, basically the interactions between different universes are so weak, we're unlikely to ever <clears throat> get information from one universe to another. So, so are you saying that, like with with your radio example, that having Having knowledge, like if, if he knew exactly how it would work, that would take away free will? No, what I was saying is that you can't necessarily figure something out by just looking at the parts. Because we've been saying the free will may not exist and everything that's determined. Because if we knew everything, we could figure out. Like if I knew everything in the world, if I, could, if I had like godlike abilities and I could see every bit of chaos and knew how to plot it, I could predict anything in the future. Because I could watch the path and see this is going to lead to this, and this is going to lead to this, and this is going to lead to this, and that's going to happen. And so if you go with that idea, then that's how life is. Everything is, is, de is determined ahead of time by just gravity or whatever, just the cause and effect. So what I'm saying, so that's the idea behind determinism, but what I'm saying is... The nuclear forces and right. all that. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, though, is that maybe something emerges out of you know the, these bits and pieces mm -hmm. that is free will something that is completely separate or different from it and even understanding everything in the universe we still wouldn't be able to predict it because determinism is really not there i think we get mm -hmm. to the point where uh basically what we have is predispositions um we don't have determinism anymore i i, I guess or at a certain level you have predispositions um because if we had true uh if we had no free will at all then, of course, we couldn't punish anybody for anything they did. Let's move into the next part, which is biology and free will. Because I think this is a great, great transition to it. I mentioned it on I think, one of the other podcasts. The guy that was on top of the Texas A&M building in the 60s that shot everybody, mm -hmm. he, uh, before he went up there and killed everybody, he wrote a letter uh, that basically said what he was going to do. And he says, you know, there's something wrong with me. I'm having these feelings. Please dissect my brain and see what's going on. And they did, and there was a tumor, and it was put, put, hitting against his, I think, hypothalamus, or whatever controls your emotions. Mm -hmm. Whatever the thing was that River was being uh, cut off from in <laughs> Firefly, I can't remember. I don't think it was the hypothalamus, or it was the, uh, not Petutor. But It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> but that being the case, Firefly. is did he choose to murder all those people, and is he still at fault? Because he had a normal life. He was a normal person. He started having these feelings. He killed, I think, his wife and his... <clears throat> maybe his mom, I don't remember who, before he left, right. who he loved and cared about, right. then he went and killed all these people with, you know, guns from there, and he, it was because of this so, tumor. So he wasn't liable, like, but well, yeah. you still have to punish or, or stop him. Well, and that's, that's what it comes down to, because then you start looking at other things. Does that mean that people who do things, who cause crimes, who who are more likely to, to be, uh, to not think and just do things, what's that called? In, Flighty? <laughs> Spontaneous? <laughs> that was gay. <laughs> no. Uh, very flighty. It, it's uh, the word impetuous, but it's it, the ADHD. Uh -huh. high, uh, impulsive. Impulsive. Thank you. People who are impulsive and commit crimes over and over again, it's because they, is it because they have a certain brain chemistry? And should you punish them because their brain chemistry is like that? Or it, do they have free will and they could stop themselves? Now, we all say, because most of us here are not criminals, we're here saying, well, you just stop yourself. But well, maybe we have different brain chemistry. Here's, well, here's an argument uh, for that, um, is that when they catch serial killers, all right, and they these are people who do horrible things to other people, maybe a sexual sadist of something, something like that. But... They don't do it all the time. He puts the lotion. When, he when, when pops, sexual when, <laughs> puts the lotion on the skin. <laughs> yes. When you go, when cops walk that by, matter. those people do not do those actions. Right. They can control themselves. Right. 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 And they don't well, do them then. But if it's a deterministic universe, they were de 
destined to. That's why I'm saying control that themselves at the, at those times. we're at a level where it isn't determined. Well, let's let's kind of we're, we're, well, we're dealing it, with it at a level where they can stop themselves from doing it, which right. means they could stop themselves any time. But well, the they, they, desire builds in them to accomplish these tasks. Like, well, a, like I, somebody who's addicted to drugs, you think that just stop taking drugs, but. They're controlled by the drugs. And some they people can't, go, and some people you know, can. But yeah, right. but if you're addicted to heroin, it's like you look. You watch like the you know a, the shows and stuff right. where it's like they take the heroin. It's like everything's okay, and they're like, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm done. Right. Whatever. And then they'll, you know, I will not watch the next episode of Twenty Four. <laughs> kind of thing. They'll yeah. sell their family soul to the devil to get the next. Yeah. Event. Right. At a certain point, it especially becomes after those cliffhangers, really yeah. hard to not do. Although people don't do it, so people do kick heroin. Do people okay. do stop yeah. bad actions? Can I take it back yeah, to my it, point? Yeah, you're always going somewhere. Because I, um, I just think that whether or not the universe is deterministic like that, we're still going to act out our parts as beings who at least think they have free will. So we're still going to have a you know a justice system and the goals of punishment. There are five goals. There's uh, retribution, deterrence rehabilitation, restoration, and incapacitation. So, in a deterministic universe, how many of those do we throw out? Well, okay, here's the thing. I think, though, we need to look at this. Let's get off the deterministic level of free will right now because we're not looking at it so much as deterministic. Because if it's deterministic and everybody just went with, well, it's deterministic, Mm -hmm. everybody believed that, then it doesn't matter because whatever's going to happen is going to happen. If it was somehow proved. It's like the argument of, do I exist or not? Right. Really, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, and that's because what you we said think earlier. we exist. Right. But that's, that's what Daryl's saying. Right. We think we have and to I think also we, we might as well. I think we all agree. Even if it was proved that it was a deterministic universe, we'd have to still do these. But what I'm saying, Daryl, is I'm not saying so much about um, a deterministic universe. I'm saying if we look at an individual criminal and we realize that he has a certain, or he or she has a certain brain structure, which causes him or her to be more susceptible to do these things. Do we blame him? It's like the guy on the tower, right? He, he right. In his case, we could see the brain tumor because our medical technology was able to see something that big. But when it's something so small as the structure of the brain that we hardly have any clue about. Like the warrior gene. So let's right. take let's take oh, the five. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay, let's goals start. Of, goals of punishment. Let's start so, with retribution. Retribution, right? Um, in the book, because he has a whole chapter on this, he's saying we have to take the idea of retribution out because... Retribution is punishing someone for the choices they made. Right. And if a, someone cannot help with the choices they make because of a certain brain chemistry that we can't determine yet, do we punish them? Hmm. For retrib- if, if we can have the ability to look in the brain and look at a person's brain and say, this guy, when he gets, when they're babies, when they get older, if we don't fix this, right. is right. going to steal and... But and, see, that's if we look at them when they're, when they're younger. Or even if we, we look at them to, when they're older. You know, that's what I'm saying. And we can, if we had that technology, right. and then let's say he gets out and doesn't get... That's well, why our laws another... are based on actions and not intentions. Right, but, there's as there's our technology, there's minority report. but as our technology yeah. <laughs> gets better, should we start to look at retribution as maybe something that we don't need anymore because we can now look into the brain and say, well, he did this because of this, and what can we do to make it better? Which comes to so rehabilitation. If, yeah, I mean, retribution is breed. kind of the vengeance yeah, part of, yeah. of justice. But it... it it seems like it's um, first of all, it's rendered impotent against like sociopaths, right? Right? Because sociopaths, like you could, well, I mean, you could do something to them which will hurt them, but um, I guess the point I was trying to make was not not so much that, but people with a conscience will actually have their own form of retribution because they're going to feel bad for what they did, right? But then again, not everyone has that kind of, conscience. and that's part of the thing again is like. You know what's the point of retribution if it's not even affecting them? And then even right. if you think about that, well, I'm just I just want to make them feel bad. I want them to feel how well, I see, felt. See, that's as the thing is, is emotions. Yeah, emotions make us want retribution. Yeah, that's where that's why we want retribution is because of our emotions. But then it comes down to not just for criminals though. Then it comes back to the whole thing is are we who we are just because of the way our brain is structured, making the choices that we make because of our, the way our brain is structured, and how much of that? And that's why. I enjoyed Incognito because he talks about things like which we talked, which we've seen before, where they've got that thing hooked up to your 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 skin or whatever, so it can tell 
when you make a decision. And you make a decision on things before you know you made the decision. So it's one of those things where, like they're showing a picture and it says, pick the picture that shows the house in the snow or whatever, or the one you like best. You make that decision before you realize, oh, I'm gonna choose this. Right. So are you the one making that decision? <clears throat> Yes, or is it are. some yeah. internal function? Well, it's I, just two parts of yourself. One is delayed and one is not. Mm -hmm. So that's well, all that, again, the, you, that, that's what you I might say think about of, it. Uh, well, it's, it's the differentiation between the conscious mind and that's what I'm talking about, yeah. your just kind of more instinctual reptilian mind. And the thing is that um, I'm not into holding people responsible for their reptilian mind. Like, you know... It, it seems like a thing that like a, a bad partner would do. Like if you had a dream about somebody and you were doing something inappropriate, if they blamed you for having that dream. It's like, well, what conscious choice did I have? It was a dream, right? Mm -hmm. But then... Um, if you blamed somebody for something that happened in a dream, you would be a woman. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but a book. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that the thing is that you sh thank you, you, uh, thank, you thank you thank you thank you voice of woman yeah. <laughs> I agree on that level that you shouldn't hold people to their subconscious but I think that once something enters into your consciousness like say that you begin lucid dreaming and then you continue the behavior even though you know that even though it's just a dream it might you know hurt someone else emotionally then I think you start taking responsibility for what's happening in your dream at that point so I think that's kind of the same thing like you can make a de decision in your subconscious but then when it reaches your conscious mind I think you still have a, a way to um, at that point can't you block the decision or change your mind okay well I wish I could I, block this out of my <laughs> okay well hey, well adding on to that maybe you can't hmm. well okay we all have what we think is our conscious thought and conscious ability and we have sort of a, a way of seeing things and a way of doing things and we make decisions and we feel like there are decisions and I don't have anything to back this up out there in in radio land I don't know what do we call it podcast land pod yeah this uh, is all opinion yeah this Internet is land. editorial but editorial. from what I've read it seems like there does seem to be a lot of scientific evidence which is backing up the idea that we are just kind of back that science up we are just kind of hanging out and there's other conscious forces in our body which are making these decisions and at the end we convince ourselves that we did it so our subconscious is controlling us? Sub, uh, not just subconscious there's this whole argument this whole thing going on inside of us about he, he says in the book that one of the reasons why artificial intelligence hasn't worked yet is because what happens in an intelligence is there are different different levels arguing over something not necessarily conscious or they may be subconscious it's like and a multitude of you it, yeah exactly right. and that's what he calls it right uh oh, does he? Like well he calls said. it the multitudes within you i think okay. uh, from a quote All right. and he says basically that the idea is that who someone's going to win and whoever wins is what causes the action to happen right. and then at that point you as the top conscious being kind of the ceo takes responsibility for it and says, I did that. Kind of like a CEO might who's mm -hmm. in the company. And he kind of uses that. He says that a... a so you have to answer to the shareholders. Kind of. <laughs> well, go. he says that it's, it's the same type of thing. Is that somebody who's conscious is someone who has so much complicated stuff going on that there needs to be sub-process underneath taking care of it. Sure. Even in the conscious world. And then our little pinpoint of, of this moment of experience is just the CEO just us right now all we can see and the CEO is kind of makes the big decision sets the mm -hmm. goals for the rest of the body right. but most of what happens is not us at all it's yeah. a, that's why it's called incognito it's us just going I did that so whatever bubbled <laughs> so, to the surface might not necessarily be something that you even had control over you just you just kind of rubber stamp and say I approve exactly. this and, and that, he's it's, saying that epiphanies don't come at I, one second they've been happening for it just like, I up think it's it. nature versus nurture always and over again, you can you can, what you're saying is nature and nurture. Your your nature, you might keep going on and thinking or acting a certain way until something comes in, and then you have to react to it, and that changes what you would have done. So it's it's a combination. It always well, will be. And it's a, and it changes. It's aren't we our decisions based off experiences and reactions. 
So the way I think now is different than I did 20 years ago because I've had way more experience, different people. Yeah, yeah. thank and if you, and, and then, <laughs> so And if you think about the biology of it, it's because... Not just for Paul. <laughs> right. Well, this is a good... This is good... This is good because um, it's... Kale and I talk about this a lot about how the brain is malleable and how it changes mm-hmm. and how the more you do something and make a habit out of something it creates a pathway in your brain. Plasticity. Stop it. So um, <laughs> basically you're making a pathway. So things that have changed, you physically changed the structure yeah. of your brain. But then we come to free will. Did you change the structure of your brain? And we're coming to a feedback. Other because people you changed s- the structure of my brain. Right. Or was it you who, who changed the structure? With my a- free will changed your free will, and together it's determined because it's free will. I think that I think we've just we've realized <laughs> <laughs> like that. That was pretty. I don't know. If that was just. I don't. I don't know. If that was deep or just that stupid. Was, that was random. <laughs> so that was, that was a little bit of both. So it's one of those things where I know that I do better when I've got other people from the outside because we're social creatures, mm-hmm. you know, helping to affect my free will. So. Well, we were talking, you know, earlier about the that. sociopaths and stuff and how their brain is different. Well, it's the experiences that they grow up with that may change that. That changes oh, your brain. Since we oh, went down oh. the, those paths, what about peer pressure? Okay. Yeah. I've got I got something right. on his, and we'll All go right. to peer pressure. Okay. Uh, the, he said in the book that they've done the and this is from the book. He said the studies they've done is that people may have it has to do with genes. And if you have, for example, it's it's kind of like if you're more prone to get cancer or if or not. If you know if you're if you've got the gene that's going to give you cancer, but you live a healthy lifestyle, you won't get cancer. If you have the gene that's going to give you cancer and you don't live a healthy lifestyle, you get cancer. If you don't have that gene, it doesn't matter how you live. You can smoke cigarettes till you're forever and you're not going to get lung cancer. The point is don't wear skinny jeans. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And so the point is... That's right, Kale. Yes, the point is... Thanks for wrapping a, that up so nicely. Don't be a hipster. The point... No, the point is, is that they found out that it's the same way with people who are like going to... Um, abuse someone it's it's they have the gene or part of them that that already is going to abuse them but if they grow up in a home that is um that is well structured and they and they learn how to how to be good people they won't act on that however if they grow up in a home that's a di- that's difficult and a problem they will act on that but those who don't have that gene are safe they could grow up in a crappy home and they'll be fine so you're saying someone like like someone who's really evil or whether it has a has a child Right. If they grew up with that person who's evil, they would grow up to be like a. If they have evil the gene. Well, the gene. If they have the gene, because they might not have the gene, and they might grow up with the evil dad or whatever. Yeah. And then they'll be fine. They'll be like totally. But if they go Skywalker. onto like a planet, yeah, and they don't grow mm. up with their hard ass uncle, right, turns into a better whiny kid. But, but then, then we come to the idea of evil. Luke, get children. down there and clean those droids. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uncle. Yes, he I was know. a dick. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, like I said, it's predisposition. Yeah. It but, really is. But what's interesting about it is is the fact that that's why you find that I think he said there was there's not necessarily correlation where pe- kids, not everyone who's abused as kids becomes an abuser when they get older because not everyone has that gene. And it's not like the abused gene. It's, it's more complicated than that. But the idea is... I think that's a good example. Is that if you're you if you have, have the abuse gene, propensity if you have a genetic it, propensity yeah. to abuse somebody, and you're abused as a child, you will probably abuse someone as you get older. But if you are not abused, you'll be fine. On the other hand, if you don't have the propensity, whether you're abused or not, guarantee though that you'll be. Fine. Uh, good point. Not a guarantee. Yeah, more right. likely, I think, would be right. more specific. Traumatic but, events um, always have are more likely to change. The way your mind was going to go, and what they, what he's saying is that traumatic events can have more effect on certain people than other people. Because you True. know those people who can just go through life and they don't really have a lot of problems. It doesn't affect them too much, and it's just because that's the way they are. That you know that their biology affects them. But I want to kind of move over to oh, let's go to peer pressure before I go to that. What were you saying about that, Daryl? Yeah, people are still responsible for themselves, even if someone else put them up to it. Next. Uh, I'll agree. I'll agree with that. Kind of, I guess it's, it's it, we judge people on their actions, even though we not know we know the power of peer pressure. I, I know for myself that there have been times I've done dumb things I probably wouldn't have done in a vacuum, but someone else was like, "Hey, it's let cool. me tell you what I did in a va- with a vacuum." No, 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 no. <laughs> with a vacuum. Wow. No, no, but no. no I'd I'd buy that. Let, let's talk about, with a vacuum pump. Let's let's talk about. By the way, we talked about Robocop the other time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, how when we wa- how when Daryl and I watch that as adults, we think it's freaking hilarious <laughs> right. because we go like. That's where Paul got that from. <laughs> oh my God! 
Anyway, sorry, inside yes. joke, guys. Okay, so uh, <laughs> the the thing is with with peer pressure and everything. Let's talk about riots and uh, mob mentality. Mob mentality. Because we here, not ever being Group in a mob, think. are like, oh, we wouldn't do stuff like that. But the people or you have we been in a mob? Or have we? I know I, I went know. to. Um, I don't know. I went to a Harvest Festival one time when I was just turning religious. That sounds mob. Oh. That's kind of a mob mentality because everybody right. is there praising Jesus and singing his praises, and you just get this euphoric feel. And I think that you experience that at things like rock concerts, too. Mm -hmm. So the mob mentality doesn't just have to be about something ah, bad. Interesting. Okay. And, and I don't know if I've ever... If you're doing it right, you experience it at rock concerts. Right. Orgies, <laughs> for example. Well, I, you know. I don't know, and that's just it, though. I don't know if I've ever experienced anything like that, necessarily, because I'm not necessarily Mr. Social Guy. But I... And a part of me says, oh, I wouldn't act like that. I've already got it in my head, and I, don't, I hope I follow this, that I'm, if I'm ever in a situation where even a small part of me knows that I'm going to do something wrong, I want to turn all my energy to run away <laughs> as okay. fast as humanly possible. With what, a TV in your hand. Whether that means... <laughs> <laughs> no. Whether that means it's all I'm in... easier nowadays with those flash yeah, screens. Yeah, seriously. You know? Wait, I've seen you do this before. What? Especially after we saw. You've seen him Dane run with Cook. the TV. <laughs> oh. Or girls that wanted to get into your Jeep. Oh wait, we had, yeah, we had just yeah. talked about this. I and told I'm, you this. Yeah. And I'm all like, Joey, look at my new friends. Let's drive together. <laughs> And you're like, no, no, <laughs> no, not gonna happen. And that—that's the whole Sarah thing. I try to kill me. That's <laughs> yeah, that was back yeah, then. But right. yeah, um, the thing is, that's why I was even thinking about this. I forgot Daryl and I talked about this. The fact is, is that I—I I feel like if let's say, who's really hot these days? Uh, me. Nathan Fillion comes up to me and says, "Oh wait, no, he's oh, like, oh <laughs> wow, just good." I was wow. gonna, I was, I was gonna, a Freudian. I was gonna say Swift. I was going to say Cindy Crawford. You were going to say Miley Cyrus, weren't or you? That oh, oh, dude, that was, <laughs> oh, Look at my tongue. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Um, well, anyway, <laughs> so, somebody hot is is like trying to... Uh, hey, baby, what's going on? Put the moves on you. Yeah, thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Right. Um, I would just turn and run to get as fast... Yeah, what <laughs> yeah. have we here? <laughs> And she's going, that's hot. That guy's got a TV. And <laughs> <laughs> Kale brings it all around again. Nice. Nicely done. Nice. Uh, Very good. Uh, let's, let's move into the idea of free will and beliefs now. By the way, we abandoned the other four tenets of punishment, but that's all right. Um, well, we're not talking I think about they're punishment. All we're talking about free will. I think they're all good. We decided Man. we're, we're going to exercise We've, free will. Yeah. Well, just real quick on those, I think they all need to happen. You need rehabilitation, even if that means changing the brain around. Mm -hmm. You need to have, uh, if you can't change the brain, you need to put someone away. What were the other two? Um, shoot. <laughs> and that's all based on so how that's society that, yeah. sees how you need to change yeah. as a whole. Okay, so uh, deterrence is okay, obviously that's, still yeah. a good yeah, one. Yeah, that that's uh -huh. important. Right? You go to jail. Um, rehabilitation, mm -hmm. which is yeah, restoration, which yeah, which is yeah. you know, like reparations yeah. for what you did. Makes you sense. Know, because there's going to be innocent victims, right? So even though it might not have necessarily been your choice, you still should try to make Ooh. good with those who were affected by... And that's a good future good. podcast, too, would be uh, should there be punishment for things that don't affect or hurt other people. And also incapacitation. What's that called? Victimless crimes. Victimless crimes. Remember Ronan had a book about that in, at Virtual World? Yep. That was the first time I heard about it, and it kind of Victim made sense. Fine. You know, like smoking pot, for right. example, or right. drugs in general. Yeah. You know, if you're not hurting everyone else. Prostitution. Yeah, pros if you're not hurting anyone else, you know, and you're doing things you choose to do, why? Of course, that's not quite true, because if you're paying for the pain... That's not. Yeah. Not, never mind. We'll we'll talk about it then. That's business. We'll talk about it then, when we have and that podcast. Judge. Anyway, so let's move over to the idea of <laughs> beliefs. You know, there are all those gray areas with victimless crimes, though, because what about the crimes committed to get the pot to you? Wait for the podcast. Yeah. What about what about? <laughs> You've got oh, a choice this time. Right. You can make it for <laughs> next week. Yeah. Okay. Or next next week. All okay, because right. maybe we'll have a special. A special. It's a trap. It's a special. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the beliefs. Uh, beliefs and free will. I want to go with what Paul said about evil. Does evil exist? If there's free will, it would seem that there is, but what if it's that whole brain thing again? I mean, can we actually say someone's evil, or does it just mean their brain's not hooked up right? Well, well you, to them, they're choosing to be evil. Oh, but are they? Or is it, or is it just well, that they've got, got like a tumor? Is how it's a, it's a, um, well, the, I think so we're using the wrong term here. 
righteous and evil go together, good and bad go together. So there is good and there is bad. You see, we're, we're I mean, evil. That's a more of a religious. We're applying statement. value statements to yeah. everything. Though. So maybe so we should say selfish. But then we come to the. I mean, what is evil really? You do everything for yourself, right? And you don't care about other people. Is that what you would call evil or bad? Because then it comes mm. to. But then, but then you come to the idea of: Is there really true altruism? Is that what it's called? Altruism. altruism. Yeah. yeah. Or do we really do everything for ourselves? This might be touching upon a topic that will come up on a later podcast yeah. someday. So, mm. Mm. interesting. Possible. Possibly. Possible. So, okay. What about then? What about free will and religion? Now, let's let's take let's take Christianity, which has one of the, which has the corner market on free will and religion. I mean, it's it's pretty or die. it's pretty much God has created everything, and everything is God's will, except for us who has free will. Right. That's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's kind of a contradiction in terms. It's like everything, if you hear people who are very religious, it's very much like it's God's will. But then, what about us? Don't we determine this? Because Yes, because you have free will. And that's why we well, can be good or bad. Well, the idea was that um, God made man in his image, and therefore man has free will just like God does. Right. But then all the animals and rocks and everything else in the on the surface are of the planet are They're deterministic. Very right. interesting. What? So that that makes basically means that you can like slaughter as many animals as you want because you're just like killing these lifeless pra- automatons, inanimate things, right? Right, and so and so so basically, we're living in a world where you know we can we've got the ability to do whatever we want, but if you take away, free but then we, God punishes right. us for eternity if we don't right. do what He. What pleases him? It's it really is the cornerstone to Christianity. If you take Which away the whole free bad. will, if you take yeah, away the free yeah. will idea, right. then then that, that, okay, that's another thing too. Like back when I was religious, I used to use that as an argument. I, I would say, you know, I can't believe in a deterministic universe because that would mean that God already condemned you to an eternity of pain if you're going to hell. Ah, good point. That's, that's true, and that's mean. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, doesn't God love his children? What an asshole! Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, well, I always had a problem with a God that would punish you forever yeah. for something that had a finite. Yeah. Right, 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 right. How can you punish someone for something for something that? I know ended? infinity is huge. Right, it's that's like, just not even it's, it's, possibly yeah, that, that, fair. It's it's funny because it's, if you know mathematically how big infinity is, like uh, it, it's so big we can't comprehend it, which is why you got to look at it mathematically. And, and at any finite point, the, the idea of forever, you are being punished forever well, here, because you didn't believe Well, here's me. another thing that's kind of messed up about the whole idea. Okay, let's just say that you are God and you're all-powerful, you're all-knowing, and you're supposedly all-forgiving and all that other stuff. So what do you do? You go, all right, I'm going to make my children, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them imperfect enough that they have <laughs> the ability to disobey me and suffer eternal torture. <laughs> what do you call yeah. that? Who That's like, people up. who likes to watch other people that is seriously tor- messed up. like torture. Well, God is the masochist. Eter- He's yeah. an eternal voyeur too. Yeah, I know. You know? Like Watching it. everybody do everything—that's kind of perverted. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know? and he, but that's just that's it. True. He's like, well, I can make all these perfect <laughs> beings, and we'd all live, you know, perfectly. But eh, let's make them a little off. Yeah. So well, I don't like it's it. my own reality show. <laughs> the the is, yeah, I need I'll create reality. Things are too boring it's here. I need some entertainment. Reality. Let's yeah. torture some people. I always, I always think it's funny that at the end of, you know, everything, the end of the Bible or whatever, after the resurrection, everything comes back. Everybody's happy. I always want to go. Okay, then what? <laughs> Yeah. Well, see, that's it's the like, everyone cheers. Yes, and we will live forever and ever. And if you explain now heaven, yeah. if you explain heaven, dude, it's like I gotta be with you forever on drugs. There's no conflict. And they're just content. Like, yeah. Right. So yeah. actually, if you want to simulate heaven, you should take heroin. Actually, would heaven? Actually, <laughs> and then you'll experience hell on the come down. That's you right. Are, you get them you both. Free it's will. a twofer. Okay, but here's the question then: Is uh, does that mean that and there's you'll pass through purgatory along the way? And you know religion pretty well, so maybe you know this, and Daryl, you might too. Is there free will in heaven? Um, you know that's kind that, of interesting God, that you would question. say that. It's like you already gave up your free will when you went to heaven because you're you in gave heaven. Up, you gave up your free will when you believed in God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, hello. When you believe in God. Well, and, it, and it's kind of silly, too, because the whole cornerstone of, of, of a lot of religions is free will. But at the right. same time, what are you doing when you're being religious? You're really giving up free will and saying, 
Let God handle right, it. Because it seems like sin is always the result of exercising your free will. Because if you're following <laughs> God, you're going to do the righteous thing. Yeah, right? exactly. But then when you're, <laughs> yeah. when you're exercising huh. your free. ability to disobey, yeah. then you're sinning. It's, so I give it's you. All, a- it's also made to make you feel better. Because like if someone oh. if someone passes or like something didn't happen your way, like you go interview for a job and it's like you didn't get the job, it's like well it was it was meant to be. Right. That's yeah. Why they say it's like it was, it's God's the will. And opiate stuff. of the mass. But it's also yeah. why um, you know uh, uh, nothing against Catholics in general because I used to be one when I was a kid. You you despise anyway. No, I don't despise it, but I mean uh, you despise everybody. There's a yeah, equally. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> equally. But it is a really <laughs> dangerous religion. Because basically, if you're Catholic, you can do whatever, Dangerous? pretty much whatever the hell you want, as long as you go to communion and say you're sorry. Confess. Yeah. You're still going to heaven. And people who really believe that, they, they, if you look at a lot of gang members, they're Catholic. I mean, that's just the way it is, because they, they really feel that. that they can go... You've taken a, a poll... Sorry, my opinion is... In the neighborhood that he taught. In the neighborhood that I taught in, okay. my homies oh, were God. mostly... Hey, yeah. homies. What was that? But, yeah... Uh, I need no thugs. So, but I, 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 I do... I, I'm lost. Somebody else go. So, uh, All right, so we just... We just, we just, we just <laughs> dude, we just lost our gang member fans, audience. All the podcast gang members are like... Oh, I'm done with this. Yeah. <laughs> fool, man. You dissing us, fool. <laughs> I'm going to come down I'm there. I'm you off my iPod, fool. I think we lost them when we were dogging Miley Cyrus, actually. Uh, if only she had I'm not going to be Now, was that free will? No, mm. <laughs> you know, it was drugs. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what What about other beliefs in free will? Right, let's, let's go to something that Paul was just saying right now about, uh, and it's not just religion. It's it's if you go with the idea of it was meant to be. There's a certain comfort in that. Even just mm-hmm. taking away religion. Oh, yeah. If you just say, "Well, I didn't get the job because that's the way it's going to be," you're saying you're basically saying there's no free will. You're basically saying, "Well, it was going to be that way no matter what I did." But it's comforting. There's a certain comfort in taking away free will because it takes away your responsibility. And well, I think it's funny that 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 religious people want to say uh, it's God's will yeah. because the thing is is. You should say that everything good is God's will and everything bad is the devil's will. Because if you say everything is God's will, then you're saying God. Well, then you get the whole God works in mysterious ways. You get away with everything. You do whatever you want. You truly have free will. I think you can just blame it on God. I think a lot of people uh, like leave Satan out of it because what they're kind of saying is that God has a track through life that's good for me. And, you know, I applied for this job I really wanted, but it's not the job that God wanted for me. Right. And God's saving me for the next opportunity. And it's not that really that. It thing. comes down to worship. It's not really for you. It's for so you can worship God. And and I guess it's a, kind of looking at things on a whole, the whole spectrum. It's not about what, yeah, what, what, I what you like want. Yeah, I always that that part in the... the, the uh, it wasn't in Science Slams, but it was the book before that, where Hannibal Dragon, Lecter says, "Boy, God must have really loved those people down in Mexico. He dropped he dropped a whole church on them and killed them all." <laughs> you know what? That's another thing about religion and you know free will and all that, and is that even the most religious person hates it hates to see someone die. And oh, yeah. it's very interesting because if you're very religious. You should be not overjoyed, but okay with somebody. No, there's, dying. There have been a few funerals I've been to with very um, uh, religious people that, yeah, that's kind of their thing about it. They're weeping for themselves. They're weeping for their own personal loss. Really, but at the same oh, time, they're rejoicing. Okay. In the well, they're fact always that this they always say that uh, God. funerals yeah, are for right the the year. survivors. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, time of gathering to mourn. So it's like, you know, you hear that a lot in um, memorials for people. You know, people, they'll say, like, you know, we all of us are going to selfishly miss this person, but they're at the right-hand side interesting. of God. Interesting. Uh, that's actually interesting because it almost is, uh, I think biologically, we are programmed to fear and dislike death. And so I was gonna. What I was gonna say is that overrides our beliefs in you know we might have in any afterlife. But what you're saying is that they've already taken that to account in religion, saying, "Well, you're just being selfish, and you're not sad for the person; you're sad for yourself." Mm-hmm. 
Interesting, because that's uh, very interesting. Okay. And also, you know, again, it's God's plan. Right, of course. Because this person was meant to be brought into God's kingdom at this time. Okay, so what about this? If God has a plan, that means everything's deterministic, but... Kind of, sort of. If Except every, for us rebellious what if God's children. Well, that's the whole thing. Then what? God hates me because he killed my father when I was eight years old. Well, that but, was his plan, dude. That was his plan. But no, but that... No, no. <laughs> okay, but this is the thing. To is turn that, me into a sociopath? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're, cool. you're a so, What the... <laughs> dude! <laughs> okay, so, what I'm... What am I saying? <laughs> they did it again. Uh, <laughs> what I'm saying is, if God is mainly all about <laughs> us because we're his children... And he's saying he's got a plan, which is deterministic, but he gave us free will. How can you do that? How can you say, um, my whole plan is deterministic, but within it is free will? How does that work? I don't control you guys, but somehow you're all going to follow my plan. How does that work? That doesn't make any no, sense. No, no, like, the, like thing is, the thing is, if you let go and believe in me, you follow my plan. If you try to take control of your own life, you follow the devil's plan or some other well, plan. But what I'm saying is God has a plan right. that's going to happen. Kind of like, then, like, we can't... like, like he has the what if plan. Like oh, he's this, got a what if plan. This right. plan is like, if all of you follow along, god damn it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 sorry, no, no. If all of you follow along, me you damn, damn it. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you'll go. You know, all of you will live out your life in this path. Now, you little naughty ones are going to interfere and everything, but those who are truly righteous are still going to stay on the path. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, like you know, some. Jerk gets drunk well, it helps when you come to realize car, so I don't know how that God explained. is a fictional yeah. character. It really helps. Which reminds yeah. me of on Family Guy the other day, they had this thing where Meg says, God, just strike me down now. And all of a sudden you see a red dot appear on her head and it goes up to heaven and God's got a sniper rifle like this. <laughs> and then his phone rings and he goes over and he's like, oh, hey, Brenda, how's it going? <laughs> uh, God's busy. Oh, that's right. got to be a future show. Just We'll, we'll do God. <laughs> just all the fun stuff we can talk we about. Have Did Freeman you just say now. we're going to do God? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I want to be there for that. Morgan I, Freeman I, may not have been ever here. I've been called as God. a celebrity. In <laughs> By who? I've heard "Oh God" before. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Uh, I was called George. Was, God, oh God, you devil! Is God random? What? No, he's determined. <laughs> oh, does God have free will? <laughs> no, that's a good one. Are ramblings random? If everything's oh wait wait, <laughs> we're going off the rails, and it's not me this time. This is kind of weird. It's no, it's What's your nightmare, <laughs> sir? <laughs> Every time you do that, they're all speeping out. Every time we yell Dude. like this, the people in the apartment upstairs Sorry. thinks we're having gay porn sex. Ah! You know, by you yelling got, that, they do now. Yeah. <laughs> the kitten just got killed and lost its wings. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> what? And your palms are going to turn hairy. Oh, nice, dude. I'll feel <laughs> okay. better. We're not <laughs> masturbating right now. See, that doesn't even oh, make sense not. because or the more you masturbate, the more you wouldn't. I have hair never, on your been, I have you never know, seen a guy that's with true. hair on his palm. Free <laughs> will! In this deterministic <laughs> universe, you guys can't stop me. So but, here I go. Yeah. <laughs> We're free willing it. Free willing it. Hey, look, look. Free balling it. I'm jacking know. off Zerg. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. the thing is, I always looked at him, and why is one of his hands curved like that? That's what I always Most do. Most action figures have that. Blaster. So they can, and it's the right, right hand because yeah. most guys are right-handed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the blaster. It's for their blaster. Oh, yeah. It's to subconsciously God, tell all kids sense. it's perfectly <laughs> normal. You'll live. Yellow balls. Right. Okay, I think we're done. Yeah, probably. Huh? Anybody else want to say anything? Do you have any free will to say anything more about probably free will? Probably not. I, 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 I think we're determined to I, not say anything I, more. I, 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 Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Okay, Daryl, next week, your choice. Have you determined with your free will what our topic will be next week? I think it's fairly related to this because I wanted to do altruism. Oh, it is altruism. Whether or not it's selfish. I think that's great. I like that a lot. I. All right, then. So for those of you who don't know what that means, altruism means is the idea, well, why don't you explain, that that you can do things that are really unselfish, right? Well, yeah, the idea of altruism is to do something beneficial to someone else, even at the expense of yourself. 
And um, there are ideas in genetics that altruism may actually be a beneficial trait because forming a strong team might be more important than enriching you as the individual. But then is that altruism if you're part of that team? Right. Oh, we'll talk about it next week. It's going to be so exciting. Arg! Yeah, I'm a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we will see you next week. Well, you're moving uh, hands. Morgan I was Freeman. expecting the prospect. prospector. You guys haven't even noticed that Morgan Freeman has spoken like several times during the podcast. Well, it, 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 he, since he had that stroke, we don't understand it. <laughs> <how> he, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> he doesn't sound like him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds a little strange. All right, so we will see you next week on another episode of Incoherent Ramblings. This is Joe Shamel. <laughs> It's Paul Hottinger, Gail Anderson, and Daryl Jors. <laughs> and it is. And where can you find all these people? Oh, <laughs> well. On the internet. <laughs> Dude, we say it every week. Yeah, but nobody listens to it. I am rambling.com. Uh. <laughs> 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 dot com. How do you spell that? That's U G H H H G H H U H H. Dot nut. Dot net. <laughs> dot nut. <laughs> Or hey, it's Paul. Or hey, it's Or hey, it's Paul. That's so funny. I farted. Bring, bring. Or hey, it's Paul. Or hey, it's Paul. Or hey, it's Paul. Or hey, Or hey, it's Paul. How did you know it was me? Okay, why are you Italian? Why are you Italian? Send me to Gino. Somebody stop this podcast before it hits the earth. An Italian's named Or hey. What can I say? Yeah. Oh, hey, he's a whore, hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> oh my God. Start the Not music, Daryl. Turn the air conditioner on. Daryl, start the Turn music on. Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish.